How's it going, folks? Wanted to make a jujitsu warm up routine video for you. Now, this is something that me and my wife do pretty much every single session. We come to class about 30 minutes early and make sure to stretch out really, really good because, for one, I'm in my late 30s, she's in her early 40s, and warming up becomes exponentially more important before jujitsu because those joints get torqued in different ways and most of the time non-consensually. So I start off with about 10 to 15 bodyweight squats just to get some pliability and blood moving. Uh, most of my stretching is lower body oriented uh, primarily because jujitsu is very hard on the knees and believe it or not it's not knee flexion or knee extension that tends to cause knee injuries it's hip rotation because most people have very tight hips. That's one reason I'm doing the pigeon pose here. It helps with external rotation and stretches out glute med, piriformis, all those other smaller glute area muscles. And I usually hold maybe 10 seconds per side and I'll just bounce back and forth. As you can see I'm moving side to side because that change in angle hits the different uh, insertion and origin points because of the, the differences in angles of the glute med and piriformis and glute minimus as well so i'm just feeling those out if something's a little extra sore i'll sit on it for a little longer just to try and get things moving and loosened up and yes that is a, a dale earnhardt custom rash guard i had made i love that thing uh, i was a huge huge dale earnhardt fan growing up so i just kind of had to splurge on that one and i can't tell you the the added benefits of this because just in my you know, a little over five years of jujitsu at this point, I have seen so many knee ligament tears from people that I know personally. And most of the time, I never see them warm up. They show up late to class, and it's, it's just kind of the recipe for it because you are not pliable. Your hips are not ready to rotate to the extent that they're going to be forced to at some point. I mean, there are specific jujitsu moves that put you in the position exactly like I'm stretching here with this internal hip rotation stretch. Um, I'm pointing my lower leg out at a 90 degree angle at the knee and driving my knee down to the ground. Now as you'll see in a second, a big key for this stretch is while you're doing this, you take your other leg and drive your heel into the ground. I spin around an extra time to, to show that specifically. Doing the same stretch here, but I'm pushing into the ground with my heel just to raise up my glutes a little bit. Now what this does is when we're trying to rotate that other leg inward to get the internal rotation stretch, it wants to turn your entire hip bone around. It basically wants to turn your crotch away from you in the line that you're stretching. So bracing on the other side blocks that off and keeps it from happening and you get a much more focused stretch on all those uh, external hip rotating muscles that limit internal hip rotation. Now what I'm doing here is a 90-90 hip flow where I'm leaning over effectively into a pigeon pose and pushing my way out. Now this helps warm up those muscles again that we were stretching initially with the pigeon pose but it adds a, an eccentric component which really helps one with blood flow uh, but it also helps add a load for the eccentric portion and that helps active mobility much more than just passive flexibility. Now, when I'm not going forward and doing the raises like this, I am leaning back, which puts my other leg into harder internal rotation, just like the stretch I was doing before here. But it's a very active internal rotation to where the muscle is under tension and having to stabilize everything that I'm doing. So these are active ranges of motion here. It's relatively easy to become passively flexible, but you need strength at your end ranges of motion. And that's exactly what this does for your hips for internal and external rotation. Now this next stretch is one that actually helps with a lot of people's back pain. This is a hip flexor stretch. 
But when you do this properly with your posture upright, you push your hips forward and you have your back legs and knee well behind you. It also works on your psoas muscles to lengthen those and your iliacus, which specifically your, your psoas muscles go and attach on your lower lumbar spine. And when those get tight, you will feel back pain, even though it's kind of a, a more of a hip muscle that's tight. And it kind of forces you into lordosis. Uh, and it is very prominent in jujitsu people because we stay hunched over in spinal flexion a lot of times, especially with our low back. People who invert a lot, they have very pliable lower spines as well as everywhere else in their spine. That is definitely not me. But uh, these muscles get very tight on me, partially because of the jujitsu, but also because of my training history. This is the next progression into that. We're doing the same hip flexion or hip flexor stretch but we're adding the quad stretch component. All we do is get in the same position, lean back, grab the ankle, and then slide forward with the hips going forward, shoulders trying to stay back. Same position, just picking up the ankle there. And this helps mobilize and make more pliable the quads. If you got tight quads, it's always gonna result in knee pain at some point. It's just going to accumulate more and more. So they're specific moves in jiu-jitsu, uh, like a calf slicer that's done from the back that will put you in positions where your quads are extremely stretched out. Uh, if you are unfortunate enough to be put into a Boston Crab or something like that, uh, you'll understand how important this is. Don't want those quads popping off because that is an incredibly long recovery process. I saw plenty of that in powerlifting. I even had a, a close friend do it just in an icy parking lot so if we have mobile strong and flexible quadriceps then that helps dramatically decrease your chance of injury i'm going into the side lunge here this helps lengthen the adductors in the hip keeping the the off leg straight and i'm focusing on getting my knees as far apart as possible here you can see me taking my elbow sticking on the inside of my bent legs knee and forcing that outward. Now, this is going to make flexibility a lot better and you'll see where this leads in a minute. But this, I'm, I'm relatively mobile in the hips. Like I, I've worked on this for years and years and years for powerlifting to be the most efficient squatter that I could. So I do these pretty well. But it's not about getting down into a bottom position like that, this and displaying that you're really flexible. It's about doing the best you can and improving over time. And I'm kind of at a point with this stretch where I'm, I'm definitely feeling the tension in the muscles, but it's hard to go any lower just because my hamstrings are on my calf. You know, my butt is almost on the ground when I'm not like arching my low back for these. So it's hard to get much lower, but it's very, very important to do because when I don't, I've had adductor strains. We're using adductors all the time in jujitsu. Uh, if you've trained full guard and drilled those kinds of moves for a long time or had people really aggressively try to pass out a full guard for high volumes of time, you know exactly where this is. Uh, one of the first things that you feel when you start jujitsu is how tired your adductors get because most of us learn uh, full guard first. So it's a very, very important thing to have strong and flexible adductors to avoid injury risk. I'm taking a second to let my muscles relax before we go into the next part of this progression. And again, this isn't about showing how flexible you are. This is about doing the best you can on these stretches and improving them over time. Now, I'm not exactly sure the proper name for this. I, I call them um, like a vertical split or north-south split. And I can't get all the way down on them. And it's very painful. But... I do it because I know it works. Um, hip flexors, hamstrings, adductors, everything gets stretched out here. And if you've ever been put into a banana split or splatal or an electric chair, you know how important this stretch can be. Um, 
specifically when people get put into this position if you are not flexible enough if you get completely straightened out into a split from an electric chair and somebody extends especially if they're a bit taller than you uh, you're going to be forced to do this and if you can't do it there's a good chance your acl will pop uh, or you're going to end up tearing one of your groin muscles either way like there's so much tension here and you want to be prepared um, any the, the pain that you feel doing these stretches for you know maybe 30 total seconds for three sets here is absolutely nothing to the pain that you feel when you are off the mats for nine months 12 months so keep that in mind when you're when you're thinking about how much the stretching is and how boring it is and all the things like that uh, my wife has benefited greatly because she used to be one of those people that you know her warm-up was going and laying down on the mat and then rolling slowly but she also had a lot of surgeries in my opinion because of that so we've been able to change those practices and she hasn't been injured ever since because she's much more mobile she does all these stretches including this one which i'm kind of naturally good at i guess but i've been doing this stretch for almost 20 years now uh, it really goes a long long way not just for injury prevention but this is actually a performance stretch because if you can get to north south on someone and the most common escape from there is to try and roll or you can get into turtle but you can get your knees spread very wide it's very hard for someone to pull you out and that all comes from this adductor flexibility that we're working in horizontal splits or straddle splits and again it's not about getting into a full split it's about getting into the deepest split that you can holding it for 10 seconds and then getting back up and relaxing then slowly going into it again and it should just be a little bit better each time that you do it and make progress over time and the better that gets the more injury resistant that you're going to be now this is a little bit of a complex stretch uh, I do this for quadratus laborum. I do this for all kinds of hip muscles, the, the glute med and piriformis, because it combines a lot. Now I'm crossing my left leg, my left knee behind my right knee, and then twisting around, trying to bring my hip down to the ground. I've just reversed it, my left hip down now and my right shoulder to the ground. And I'm trying to create as much separation between my shoulders and my hips as I can because it really stretches out those muscles in your back that relate to posture and rotation. So if you've ever been in jujitsu or grappling in general, you know that you're going to get twisted up quite a bit. And this really helps loosen those muscles up. And if you get put into a twister or, you know, God forbid, you get mounted and someone puts diagonal twisting pressure on you, uh, you can tap just from that. And this, this really helps alleviate a lot of that tension and decrease potential muscle tears, especially, or low back issues. Because you, you pop your back on one of those moves and you're going to be in bad trouble for weeks and weeks. Now, this is also a stretch that goes into the hips and the QL. It's kind of a, a similar stretch but instead of doing it face down i'm doing it face up this is a lot more common that you'll see in like track athletes or field athletes in general in their warm-ups but for me uh, i think for heavier people or people with much more rigid and muscular torsos it's very hard to get as good of a stretch with this stretch specifically as it is the one before it where i did that before and the opposite is also true. If you are a lighter person that's more flexible, uh, it's probably better to use this stretch to go after that effect as opposed to the other one because you're literally not light enough to get enough torque to bring your hips down and your shoulders down and you'll just kind of float. This is definitely a very good stretch for everybody to do. part of our 
follow along warm up here is forearm stretching. So I'm just putting my hands down and I'm going to stretch my forearms in four different quadrants, moving them 90 degrees at a time. And that is rotating your radius and ulna into positions where you're going to be stretching out different supination and pronation muscles because you can't just stretch out your forearms on one angle. There are plenty of muscles that go throughout your forearm, extensors and flexors, that kind of go in diagonal angles because they help turn your hand uh, into pronation and supination or you know, palm up, palm down. And changing the angles here when you stretch in these flexing uh, flexion positions is really important to do. Uh, I get tons of tendonitis in my elbows, mainly from powerlifting and all the strength sports I used to do, so I'm susceptible to it. But in jiu-jitsu, especially in gi, all those muscles get super, super tight, beat up, inflamed, and you develop tendonitis. So that's one way to try and stay ahead of those things. And here I'm up against the wall doing a pec stretch. I'm pushing my elbow up as high on the wall as I can just to get the pecs to stretch all the way across. My elbow's up about as high as my ear here for reference. You want that elbow up there. And now I'm doing an external shoulder rotation stretch where my palm is on the wall. My elbow is not. I'm not very flexible in the shoulder, so this is actually pushing my limits of range of motion. But I can't go too hard because it'll aggravate my elbows. But what these stretches do is release antagonistic tension to where when you raise your arms, your rotator cuff muscles don't have as much resistance and you stay healthier.